talk show we have with us today mr beerut sheet co-founder and ceo of gapsha a unicorn based in silicon valley it is absolutely an honor to have you here mr sheet thanks kanchan thanks for having me here it must be late evening in san francisco right yeah it's but i keep india hours so you know my day is just beginning i have a lot of calls <laughs> okay so i would like to start this conversation to 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 you know by understanding the gupshub's journey i mean you started this platform nearly two decades ago so what was in your mind then and how conversational engagement domain has evolved over the last 18 20 years yeah well um you're right i think it's about 17 years or so and i think you know in the beginning i mean we saw the power of uh you know when we started the mobile revolution was happening and there were another 1 2 3 billion people getting connected for the first time right they were not on the internet but they were getting digitally connected uh, for the first time and with those early feature phones mobile phones right really the lowest common denominator was actually sms right that was the only thing that worked on every mobile device so i think our key insight at that time was you know if you can use sms as the transport layer to deliver content to millions of people then you know for the first time you can you can deliver rich interesting content to billions of people that was that was really the key idea and then the early version of gupshap actually was a was a, a social network it was a consumer service right it was kind of like twitter where you could publish and subscribe uh for messages that became immensely popular actually it grew to about 70 million users uh but then you know it, it, we were subsidizing all of that sms messaging traffic at that time and it got prohibitively expensive it was too expensive to subsidize and then for different reasons we couldn't monetize it either so i think at that point we had to pivot to a different model and then we switched to the enterprise model and you know and then the rest is history i can go into more details as well but that's sort of be that's how we got started it's been a long journey with uh, quite a roller coaster with lots of ups and downs but you know hey you know what doesn't kill you makes you stronger right true true uh, so i would also like to know how gupshap is helping businesses transform you know across industry verticals yeah so i think uh, so like i said right once we pivoted to the enterprise model um uh, uh we you know enterprises like large banks or e-commerce companies or education and travel companies and so on they have millions of consumers and they need to communicate and send updates to them right so in the beginning um you know uh, or until recently a lot of these messages were almost entirely on sms right so you get all of these notifications saying you know you used your credit card here's your otp you know your order is confirmed your package is arriving uh, you know you can upgrade your flight and things like that all of those messages were all happening on sms now more recently as new technology has emerged uh, you can also send messages through whatsapp uh, or through instagram or through these other channels and when you when you do that it's no longer just a one way notification but you can also have a two way meaning the user can also respond right which enables a two way conversation so as that is happening more and more businesses are now using rich interactive you know conversations with consumers to to do all kinds of things to do you know uh, to do marketing to do commerce to do support and and so on so anyway i think in a nutshell what gupshub does is we we provide the tools to enterprises to help them engage their customers better through conversations right through conversational messaging through conversational voice um you know conversation uh, to do marketing commerce and support and i think it's a, it's an exciting opportunity there's a lot of growth in this space enterprises are seeing enormous value and returns coming out of this and um, you know i think it's uh, uh, you know because everybody i mean you think about it in countries like india or Lat in regions like latin america and other places um they may not be using the web they may not download a lot of apps but they all have whatsapp right they they all have messaging either sms or whatsapp 
and therefore it's it really is the lowest common denominator in the emerging markets and i think it's uh, you know it's a very very critical it's almost the primary channel of customer engagement and customer interaction for enterprises so so it's a, it's really exciting and that's you know we really provide all the tools to enable all of this i think instagram has also you know come up in a big way in last uh, few years so are you also working with instagram uh, you know platform yeah so i think you know one important distinction to make is uh, all of these social media platforms there's a consumer angle which is consumers interacting with each other and then there is the business messaging api right so instagram uh, which is immensely popular but but recently just uh, a few months ago they started enabling businesses to you know to automatically communicate with consumers so now that is also emerging as a new opportunity uh, for businesses to you know they they can write some software and build these automated chatbots right which means if any user likes an instagram a, a, an item on the instagram photo i mean they can literally have a little conversation saying do you have it in this color do you have it in the size and then actually pay for it and buy it right there right without having to go to a different website or anything like that so yeah i think we are seeing you know uh, so uh, whatsapp business messaging is growing fast even instagram business messaging is also growing and uh, i think uh, yeah in fact enterprises should be taking advantage of these things to really drive a lot more engagement and commerce so artificial intelligence has also you know it is transforming the digital marketing domain now so how ai enabled conversation marketing is helping brands to reach you know wider uh, consumer segments a uh, great question right so the moment you can have a, a uh, an enterprise can have a two way conversation with consumer um, you know consumers can can submit any kind of query right they might say okay can you show me a red shirt or do you you know can you show me gifts between you know uh, you know 5000 and 10000 rupees for example or you know by 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 budget by size by color by shape and so on they can they can select and ask queries like that right now um to for a business which may receive millions of queries like that right they have to automate it and but but automating queries phrased in natural human language can be can be quite challenging so that's where ai comes in right within ai especially technologies like natural language processing um or uh, voice technologies as well uh, they can help an enterprise automatically understand what the user is asking uh and then look up on the back end and then recommend the right product or the right item and and so on so that's where conversational ai comes in it it enables businesses to build these you know very delightful engaging experience so much so that for the consumer it feels like oh i'm just chatting with a human right and uh, they may not know or care whether it's a human or a chatbot so long as it is it works right and and i think for a for a business right it makes it much more effective right because the alternative is they'll have to have hundreds of uh, customer support agents right responding to all these queries but if they can use ai then they can automate it uh, or at least they can automate most of the queries if not every query right and and the frequently asked common queries are easier to automate so they can automate those queries and uh, escalate the more complex one to human agents but uh, ai is really transforming the the conversational uh, industry uh, and businesses are you know the tools have gotten very good uh, i think ai models have gotten very good as well so what was you know just an idea uh, even a couple of years ago is now the technology is all there and you can do it in different languages you can do it even it can understand accents you know for spoken the voice uh, sort of understanding so it's become very very powerful i would also like to know uh, the new growth drivers for you and also your you know expansion plans sure i think uh, well firstly you know i think in terms of expansion plans if you've read a recent news stories i mean gupshap acquired about 5 to 6 companies just in the last maybe 9 months right so uh, the the first thing for us is to unify all of these products to create 
uh, a really advanced product. But as it stands right now, Gupshup is really unique. We are the only ones that can offer a comprehensive toolkit for enterprises for all of their customer engagement needs. We can offer messaging tools, voice tools, we can offer chatbot development capability and conversational AI across different languages and, uh, and so on, right? So we have, um, uh, through these acquisitions, we have built out probably the most uh, advanced and comprehensive product stack, right? So, so we continue to invest a lot, right? We, we've always, um, you know, all of Gupshup's success has all been built on a foundation of product and engineering, right? We invest a lot in that. And now with the, with the very advanced product, we're gonna continue scaling, adding more features, more capabilities. We listen to our customers very carefully and do that. So, you know, R&D is sort of one important growth driver for us. And then another one is international expansion. Right, uh, a year ago we were maybe in five countries, but now we are in about 40 plus countries. We have uh, teams and customers in um, many, many countries around the world. And we are seeing a lot of traction in Latin America, in Southeast Asia, in Middle East and Africa as well. So we are really expanding uh, dramatically on those sides. And maybe the third thing is just, uh, you know, developing um, um, sort of a lot of innovative solutions in partnership with our customers, right? So we listen carefully uh, to, you know, to what they need or what they do with the tools that we provide them. And then, um, you know, if they need anything extra, we'll package it up quickly. We'll, we'll create new solutions and launch new products to the market. So, you know, I think that's uh, working out, you know, really well. So I, I have now two questions. Are more acquisitions on the card? And also what is happening at the innovation front? Because now you have you know, so many collaborate on the partners like one data speed, AI, and I, I suppose one more, Nolarity, well, who you acquired this year only? Yes. Yeah, all of these companies, right? So Nolarity gave us the voice capability. Um, One Direct gives us the agent dashboard capability. I think Acid and Active AI gave us the conversational AI capabilities uh, and so on, right? And there's also .go, uh, which gave us the RCS capability as well. So I think it's um, it's been very effective in helping us build out a highly scalable product, right? Um, I think, will there be more acquisitions? You know, it, it really depends. I mean, I don't think uh, we, we start with an assumption of wanting to do an acquisition, right? If we find um, a, a company that's a good fit, that is complementary, they have a good team and culture and so on, then, you know, of course, we'll, we'll do it. But, um, you know, we are always looking, but there's nothing, you know, in the pipeline right now. I think apart from that, uh, you know, we're going to continue in terms of innovation. Uh, there's a lot of new things coming up, right? So, for example... Uh, because we have the messaging and voice capability, right? So we expect uh, 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 what's called voice deflection to messaging, right? Meaning if the if the call center is uh, is busy, uh, then instead of asking the customer to stay on hold, we can redirect uh, the message. Uh, we can redirect the the conversation to a messaging experience, right? Saying, "Hey, sorry, we couldn't pick up your call, but." you know, here's a chatbot that can help you accomplish your task, right? So that's that just one example, uh, but we are, uh, you know, doing also, um, we are integrating call centers with, with voice bots, right? Uh, with, with chatbot experiences. Uh, we are creating some very innovative marketing uh, experiences, right? So businesses can engage their customers, activate their customers, you know, send out deals and offers and and so on. Uh, we are enabling uh, commerce, right? The, so uh, here's something amazing, right? Most of us know that you can you can have a, a digital storefront on a website or a mobile app, okay? But what many businesses may not realize is it's now possible to have a uh, storefront inside WhatsApp itself or Instagram, right? Where you can list your catalog, you can have shopping cart, you can put prices and even payments and so on. So the whole end-to-end -end shopping experience is possible right uh, inside that. Uh, and maybe the last thing that, you know, in particular, your 
uh, customers and viewers might be interested in is uh, you know using um, um, using Instagram and uh, channels like that to to integrate sort of social media marketing with conversational messaging, right? So for example, when a user complains on Facebook or on Twitter or Instagram saying, hey, you know, I had this problem with this, uh, with this enterprise, well, the enterprise, uh, you know, enterprises can set up a chat bot to instantly look at the complaint, resolve, you know, have a little private conversation with them to resolve the complaint and, and then convert it into a testimonial, right? So because if you can, address these issues instantly and automatically, then it really, you know, help you manage your brand reputation and, and drive a lot of customer satisfaction. So I think uh, there's, there's, uh, the possibilities are endless. And I think, uh, you know, businesses really have to, no matter what they're trying to do, you know, this is going to become the primary means of digital engagement and digital uh, communication with uh, your customers. Apart from WhatsApp and Instagram, do you do you see any other you know communication platform that is coming up in a big way that could be you know uh, uh, the, the that could be the WhatsApp in future? Well, um, you know I think there are many channels uh, that are coming up, and ultimately you know I, I'm sure you know more than one will succeed. So, for example, uh, RCS uh, is another messaging channel that's coming up. There's also Google Business Messages, GBM, uh, that is uh, emerging as well. Um, I think SMS continues to be, you know, very, very valuable and so on. And then Gupshop itself has launched an innovative channel that we call GIP, right, which is just short for Gupshop IP messaging channel. So, you know, each of these channels, they serve a different purpose, a different use case. Uh, you know, they have different features and capabilities, maybe even different price points. Um, right. So ultimately, the point is, you know, uh, an enterprise wants to engage all their users, no matter where they are. Right. And uh, they, they enterprises tend to be kind of channel agnostic, meaning it doesn't matter what channel it is, so long as they can engage with their customer. Right. So so I think, um, you know, in a way, as you have multiple channels, it makes it it allows them to do more things and more rich uh, things, uh, you know, experiences, uh, deliver rich experiences to their customers. How is the consumer engagement, you know, it differs, you know, in India and US, maybe other markets. I mean, what, what, what is the difference which you have observed? You know, I think the biggest difference really is the medium of engagement, right? If you look at US, uh, the Western markets, right, US and maybe Western Europe, it tends to be a very web centric uh, ecosystem right because every every business every brand they have a website okay and uh, and some of them will have apps but all the transactions and engagement and uh, and commerce and conversations and so on is all focused on the website so when they use messaging they will use it just to drive the user to the website where the real commerce happens but when you look at the emerging markets, you look at India or even Brazil and Indonesia and so on, there, uh, you know, you don't have a web dominant or a web centric ecosystem, right? Because there are many more users on messaging apps, right? Maybe, what is it? Maybe 500 million users on messaging apps versus maybe 100, 150 million on, on the web that we know it and so on. So messaging is where, you know, you're gonna have far more users, far more reach, and, and then within, you know, these enterprises also want to do all that rich interaction within the messaging channel, right? Because you can't, you can't just send a message and send the user back to the website because consumers are not doing that. They're not used to that. On the other hand, if you're inside WhatsApp and you say, oh, here's a catalog, here's an item here, you can, you know, create a shopping cart, pay for it, look at deals, interact with different options and so on. And all of that happens right inside the messaging channel right, then, uh, then it's uh, just everybody would use it. So I think that's honestly the biggest difference. The medium of engagement in the Western markets is the web. The medium of engagement in the emerging markets is, uh, or is the messaging channel, 
right and i think there are difference uh, in device as well i mean are we are we are we using more mobile phones here in in laptops here or in the us also people are using uh, mobile to transact through web well yeah no i think i think emerging markets are much more mobile first right or mobile centric uh, of course everybody in the us also has mobile phones and so on but you know in the us people also spend a lot of time at their desk in the office or uh, or at home right and people are very familiar and not only that the habit was formed right uh, in the mid 90s when the web came about so everybody's been using websites so even when mobile phones came about people continue to use these websites from the mobile phone uh, but emerging markets were mobile first you know meaning they, they their first digital experience was the mobile phone which is a smaller screen and within that you know it's very messaging centric because everybody uses messaging in a way that like even in the us email is a big deal and you know web is a much much bigger deal i think in emerging markets it's really mobile first messaging first uh, ecosystems and therefore you know uh, the, the the impact of web or email or even apps is a lot less than what it'll be for messaging uh, in in the, in the emerging markets yeah. So one question at a time when many unicorns are facing downturns, you know, due to range of reasons, maybe inflation and uh, you know fuel fuel price and also Ukraine uh, Russia war. How does Gupshop remain profitable? Oh, I think well, firstly, you know, we've been profitable for nearly ten years. Okay, through all kinds of ups and downs in the markets, you know, uh, we we've we maintained. we built a profitable business um and i think we we will continue to do that and we'll continue to stay that way right so firstly we just we built that muscle of of you know running managing a business prudently uh, of being careful with our expenses of focusing on high roi activities uh, we invest in areas where we expect you know to to grow or to drive revenue and so on right so we really we listen carefully to our customers we don't get carried away with with uh, recruiting excessively right and so on we'll 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 get good talented people and and only as much as we need uh, and, you know and not sort of uh, i think a lot of uh, a lot of young entrepreneurs first time entrepreneurs and so on when they get uh, raise a lot of funding they assume that oh great you know we can spend a lot and we can do all of these things but if you're not careful you know then your expenses can get ahead of your uh, of your projected revenues and so on and that's when problems can start so i think really you know some of it is just being mature about it being common sensical about it being very thoughtful and deliberate right uh, because uh, yeah and and you know as a as a business you kind of have to uh, you know you can invest ahead of the market a little bit but you can't do it too much right sometimes it it takes time for the market to for your customers to learn and adopt and grow your products and so on so you have to basically you know analyze all these different factors and and just you know be, not get carried away uh, or if you start thinking oh great you know we are a unicorn we have a lot of money let's go spend it all uh, you know th- there's no guarantee that once a unicorn you'll stay uh, forever a unicorn right there's no such thing i think you kind of have to keep growing your business building it scaling it up and sort of that's how it works yeah very important points indeed and now last question what would be your you know uh, advice to aspiring entrepreneurs oh i think uh, uh, you know i have uh, a lot of uh, battle scars and bruises and therefore a lot of advice uh, you know that uh, and lessons that i've learned i think there are uh, i mean depends you know i think there is um, uh, a startup journey can be a roller coaster it can be lots of ups and downs so it's important not to get overly depressed or overly euphoric i think you want to be stay balanced um i think it's also you know uh, be very customer centric right listen carefully to the customer figure out the product market fit uh if they like your product make sure you understand why but if they don't like it even even more important to understand why they don't and then see how you can kind of improve it i mean what else you know having a good team is super important um i think uh, um that makes you, you know if you, if you have a great team that lead to great products which then lead to good customers and revenues 
and and so on. So don't compromise on on the team uh, that you're that you're building as well. Um, you know, I think it's a uh, it's a it's a risky journey, right? So you need a lot of grit and perseverance and patience, uh, right? So you can't get very impatient. I mean, as we discussed earlier, right? The Gupship journey has been a very long one. And there have been many, many, many difficult years, right? Almost, I don't know, nine, maybe the first 10, 12 to 14 years were very, very challenging. So, I mean, just think about it. When entrepreneurs start, they don't think about such long timelines, but sometimes it happens, right? It's not, uh, it's not by choice, but you, know, you kind of have to uh, be persistent as well, right? But ultimately, I think, look, the most important advice I can give is you know, be, be entrepreneurial, take a chance, you know, I think entrepreneurship is uh, is the ultimate sort of prosperity generating machine for society, you know, for the country. And, and I think even if you fail, uh, you learn so much more. Uh, and in India, I mean, there's uh, just such a hot job market, if you will, that you'll, you know, you'll get picked up. So there's really no, no failure, right? I mean, you attempted to do something, maybe it didn't succeed, you know, you can go back to the job that you think you would have had uh, very likely, right? So, so there's, there's not as much risk as you might think, but, but on the other hand, if it succeeds, right, it'll be a sort of complete game changer. So, you know, I think I would encourage uh, more people to, to take risks. I mean, it's a, it's a great time to be doing entrepreneurship in India where there's a huge need for technology in general uh, that, you know, it's, uh, I think the odds are more in your favor. So nicely explained. Thank you, Mr. Mr. Shade, I know for talking with you for them. Thank you very much. Thanks, Kanchan, for having me again. Thank you.